Governors of the All Progressive Congress, APC, insist on having a convention before the presidential primaries. And the People's Democratic Party, PDP, affirms that it has not zoned its 2023 presidential ticket to any part of the country. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacol. The ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, met on Sunday, January 9, to decide a substantive date for the party's national convention. This was partly in response to the caution issued by President Muhammad Buhari in an interview by, that by the dilly-dallying, uh, the APC might be setting itself up for defeat by the opposition, the People's Democratic Party, in 2023. Now, speaking with uh, State House correspondents, the chairman of the Norton uh, Governor's Forum and Governor of Plateau State Simon Lalong noted that deliberations at the Sunday meeting would center on picking a date for the party's convention. Lalong explained that the party is working towards having its convention in February and that despite concerns the president raised about the issue, the governors were determined to ensure that nothing stops the convention. Well, joining us to discuss this is Moise Banire. He is a senior advocate of Nigeria and a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Great. So, of course, the party, um, according to the opening of this conversation, is insisting that there has to be a convention uh, before they have the primaries of the party. And, of course, this is something that happens. It's normal. Uh, but why is it that the governors are the ones who are fronting and asking that this be done before the party primaries? I mean, February, February was already set from last year as a month that they would be conducting the primaries. So has anything really changed? Well, uh, well you know, I'm not a party member, but I know from what I read all over the old place regularly that uh, a lot of intrigues is going on within the ruling party and i'm aware of the fact like you already said it is unconventional to have a convention cum uh, primaries at the same time simultaneously it is not proper it's not regular in fact it's a source of confusion but like you already said it's not uh, the governors are stakeholders in the party so also are a lot of other people that are stakeholders within the party but normally is usually the National Executive Council of the party that's supposed to determine when actually that will be taken place. Well, of course, as you know, uh, the APC cannot boast of such a body right now, and they do not even have a board of trustee. Uh, they hardly have any meeting of the National Caucus. So most of the time, you only hear of the president, you hear of the governors, and you hear of the uh, caretaker committee. Most of these bodies, for example, the governor's forum, the president, they are all uh, alien to the structure of the party as far as the constitution is concerned, even the critical committee itself. So to a large extent, the party uh, has been in a crisis, and that crisis is still lingering, and that is why they are still having these challenges that they are having. I've said it that almost six or eight months ago that certainly it seems to me clearly that the implosion of the party is inevitable and i think they are working actively towards that mm. thank you well um president Muhammad buhari had a meeting um prior to this um and he was quoted to say that um he wanted a time a particular time fixed for the convention which um, so many people have said that this ask by the president has further deepened the crisis within the party. And um, as a leader of the party, how much power do you think the president wields, you know, um, as to the fact that he would want to bring the party together or reconcile the warring factions to make sure that the party um, can go forward? Do you think the president has that much power, being that the APC in itself does have a lot of strongmen? Well, let me, let, me, let me confess to you that I, while I was the National Legal Advisor of the party and a member of the National Working Committee and the Executive Council of that party, uh, the president had always resisted invitation to be 
domineering in terms of party affairs as much as possible. But as things progresses, you discover that gradually people, in my view, are gradually bringing all pressure on him to take charge of the party. In other words, submitting the entire party to the president. And I think that led to what happened eventually in dismantling the uh, earlier structure of the party. If you recall that the meeting that led to the dissolution of the then National Working Committee was presided over by the president. Again, that certainly also was an irregular act within the party constitution. But that had taken place. But the truth of the matter is that up to now, practically all the major stakeholders in APC look up to the president for direction on all affairs, in all affairs of the party. So to that extent, I believe that they have on their own voluntarily submitted the authority of the party to the president. But what, what, where does that leave the national leader of the party? You know who I'm speaking about, the former governor of Lagos State, because he's also called the national leader of the party. What is his responsibility in but this there's regard? Nothing like that, uh, as far as I know, there is nothing like national leader of the party in the APC constitution. There is nobody that is national leader. There are so many national leaders of the party. In fact, primarily those who are. But this is this is. But he's known generally, and I mean nationwide, as the national leader of the party. And yeah. members of the party yeah. have also alluded to this. So whether you know, it's in the constitution or not, is it that the way people always in Nigeria tend to massage others? But constitutionally speaking, there is nothing like national leader in the APC constitution. And if you are talking, to the best of my knowledge, about national leader of the party, technically you might be the president of the president, being the one in charge of the affairs of the company and the ambassador of the party in government. But generally speaking, there are national leaders of the party, not a single national leader. It's not, it's not a position that is uh, provided for in APC constitution, to the best of my knowledge. So, is uh, alien to the APC constitution. Let me, let me push you further on the issue of zoning, because this is on the lips of every Nigerian. We're talking about zoning, pressure groups, um, different groups across the country, especially in the South, uh, talking about zoning. Um, so, like I said, many groups are asking political parties, not just the APC, but the PDP and other political parties, that they should jettison the idea of zoning and throw open their party tickets um, to all and sundry. And I'm wondering, what do you think the APC will be standing on this? Look, bearing in mind that you have been and worked with the APC, what direction do you presume they might be going um, if, from, in this from, regard? From, from my observation, it seems that the APC is going south uh, from my observation. But that is not to say that, again, there is a limitation in terms of the law to any other aspirant coming from any other part of the country to contest. It happened before. Recall during the presidential primary of uh, General Brari that someone like uh, Rocha Sokorocha also contested during that period. Now we turn it to find that there was this unspoken zoning to the north. And the same thing is not unlikely to happen this time around also, but it seems that the APC tend to be looking towards the south. Like I said, that does not automatically exclude all other aspirants from other zones of the country. Hmm. Why do you think the push for the south is becoming more and more uh, loud, um, especially now in 2022, looking forward to the elections? Um, it, Again, I ask this not because I do not think that um, the South should be pushing for anything, but I'm asking. Um, we've been zoning for years. We've been rotating these, this power, even though certain persons in certain parts of the country have been given the short end of the stick. But uh, should we, after this administration, be looking at zoning or should we be looking at one who's capable to deliver? Well, it depends on where the, your perspective uh, I must tell you that originally, and for some time, I've always believed in competency as opposed to zoning. In other words, let's look for somebody who is able to deliver the goods. But in recent times, as a result of so many acts of injustice in the land and a lot of agitation in the land, I'm beginning to think, seriously speaking, that that might appear to be one of the ways to address the tension in the country presently. Ah, interesting. Now, 
there are divisions within the party, bringing it back to the APC again. Um, it was gathered that some governors um, are no longer comfortable with the um, goalpost shifting politics within the party. And this, this, is, um, this has been credited to the Keteka um, Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, which is headed by Governor um, Bala Buni. Um, I'm wondering... Why do you think this committee has been plagued by so many controversies? And I'm not just talking about one. I'm not even talking about this. I'm talking about several controversies, which you and I have actually had conversations about. Uh, well, maybe if you look at the foundation in the first sister, how did they come to be? That's number one. Two, look at the composition. Another challenge. The third aspect of it is the way and manner in which they have uh, carried out the primary, the congresses, sorry, the congresses, in different parts of the country, to the extent that today, you virtually all the states of the country, you have parallel executive at all levels. And that is one of the factors militating against the convening of any convention now. Because to have a consolidated list of delegates to that convention would be an equivalent task, if not an impossible one, for the Kateka committee. Just today, I just read online that even in Kepi, for example, Senator Alero just opened a parallel APC office, and you know it exists in Kano, it exists in a lot of people in Lagos. In a lot of places, all these exist. So, which list are you going to ultimately use for this purpose? The problem is, uh, uh, I mean, the problem of APC is one that is so huge that I personally do not know how they are going to surmount it. Even common membership register, there is no credible membership register of the party on ground, which is the foundation of all subsequent acts of the party, particularly in terms of the congresses and the, uh, the convention and even the party primaries. This is a sacred document, but which is not necessary as we are talking now. So the challenge is like rightly observed, and myriad, and I do not know how they are going to tame it before the convention. I want to zoom in again on the question I asked uh, and, and what was raised, the concern that was raised by the governors. I want to zoom in on the goalpost shifting politics um, and what you think they were making reference to. What exactly do you think they were talking about when they said the goalpost shifting politics? And the goalpost shifting means that there is no established rule or regulation in whatsoever manner. Take the issue of the scheduling of the event within the party. It will be, even the Congress, if you recall, the date that was given, almost, uh, all the dates given were shifted almost two, three times. And the, the same thing with the convention that is stressing now. Again, the rules of the game kept on shifting equally. So there are so many issues that are plaguing the party, particularly the activities of the uh, extraordinary caretaker committee. So mm. you cannot say this is where we stand and you go to bed, you might wake up tomorrow and find yourself elsewhere. And that's what people are saying, that there is a need to reasonable certainty in the affairs of the party, rather than what it, for example, the uh, uh, proposed primary is supposed to be in February now. Up to date, nobody knows the exact date. Committee ought to have been formed more than three months before it, the event, because the convention is not usually a small thing. It says a lot of logistics. There is a notification aspect to the commission, which takes another one, 21 days eventually. See, these are all the issues that people are wondering that, look, where are we? So there is no predictability right now hmm. in, in terms of the appearance of the party. And that's why people will say that the, 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 the goalposts keep shifting hmm. to the extent that there is so much uncertainty. The so whole affairs seem to be shrouded in secrecy. Hmm. I'd like to push you a bit further, uh, and this one, this one's a, a, a pretty direct question. Uh, um, might be, might you might not necessarily what be in the position to answer it, but I would ask because you were a member of the political party. Now, all of the issues that are cropping up and bedeviling the party as we speak, could these also be pointers to how this party was formed? I'm talking about the foundation of the APC, the policy, the blueprints. Was it built to last? Was it, did it have long-term goals? Are they seemingly able to achieve these goals? Or was it meant for a certain reason and that the time for that has passed and that's why the party is somewhat suffering? Well, to a large extent, you might be right in the sense that there is still a large disconnect among the members of the party, particularly coming from different backgrounds. 
And what we have expected that they made after the merger, there will have been active effort to ensure that everybody is integrated into one, but that never took place. And I'm not too sure it's taking place uh, right now. So to that extent, the foundation itself might be part of what is plaguing the party right now. Again, what are the goals? What did they set for themselves other than hijack of power and the use of say? Beyond that, have they been able to build an institution, much less it's very strong institution? I'm not too sure about that at all. Mm. I, so to that extent, I believe that the it will seem to me, let me put it that way, that at the time of the merger, the primary motive or objective was simply to wrestle power from the People's Democratic Party, which after accomplishment, people tend to just concentrate on the hijack of the various positions and offices that are available rather than trying to be the united and virile party. Mm. Finally, before I let you go, uh, let's talk about some of the movements within the party. We've seen um, certain organizations put together and certain people, groups coming out to tell us certain persons within the party to run for the presidential ticket. Uh, we've also seen uh, billboard surface uh, in the federal capital territory of the vice president, um, which is also indicating interest uh, for, for him to run for the presidential ticket. Um, would you get a comment on how this two people from the same place, um, especially the vice president and, of course, uh, the former governor of Lagos State, um, Tinubu, how, will, how this would affect the structure or maybe, you know, the body language of the southwestern um, parts of the party? I don't see it affected in whatsoever manner. You see, ambition is usually legitimate. People can always have ambition. The only thing is that you prosecute in a manner that is not divisive. But there's nothing wrong here because, in fact, it's always, in my own view, it's extremely strategic to have as many materials as possible from the Southwest coming out so that people can have choices. And at the end of the day, we can have our best being pushed out there. Mm. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Moise Banire is a legal practitioner. He's also a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate your thoughts. My pleasure. All right. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we will discuss whether or not the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has zoned its presidential ticket to anyone. Stay with us.